If someone asked you who the richest people in history were, who would you name? Maybe a billionaire like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, or Bill Gates. But forget them. We are about to meet another man who was way richer than any of them, and he actually lived long time ago in the 14th century. He was known as the King of Kings and amassed a fortune that made him probably the wealthiest person who ever lived. He even spent so much that he flooded the market with gold and crashed Egypt's economy, which took 12 years to recover. But before finding out more about him, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe and leave a comment below. You can also leave a like, and if you did not find this video interesting, then you can take your like back, which I hope you will not. Now how wealthy this man actually was, sources claims that his fortune, adjusted to inflation, will be the equivalent of around $400 billion today. That is more than Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos' fortunes together. This man's name is Mansa Musa, and sources claimed that he was the richest person of all time. He was the ruler of the Mali Empire in West Africa from 1312 to 1337, coming to power in a time when much of Europe was facing civil wars and most of African kingdoms and Islamic world were flourishing. He is known for his wealth and generosity, and he is famous for his sensational pilgrimage to Mecca, which we will discuss in this video. He also played a significant part in the spread of Islam, and his fame reached as far as Europe, where tales of his wealth began to stir the interest of traders and explorers. Mansa Musa gained the throne after his predecessor, Mansa Abu Bakr II, sailed out with a large fleet of ships to explore the Atlantic Ocean and was never seen again. Musa then became the ninth king of the Mali Empire, and during his reign, with an army of around 100,000 men, the empire reached its territorial peak, consisting of land that is now part of Guinea, Senegal, Mauritania, the Gambia, and the modern state of Mali. The Mali Empire spanned from 1240 to 1645 and was the largest and richest empire yet seen in West Africa. Immense wealth was gained from acting as a trade hub between the interior and southern coast of West Africa and north of Africa across the Sahara Desert's caravan routes. Salt, gold, and ivory were the major commodities traded. Musa was a Muslim, and his pilgrimage to Mecca, also known as Hajj, made him well known across northern Africa and the Middle East. He made his pilgrimage between 1324 to 1325, spanning 2,700 miles, leaving his son to rule in his absence. But now comes the interesting part. For this pilgrimage, Musa prepared a convoy the size of a music festival, which is making even modern time artists jealous. Now let's talk numbers. His convoy consisted of 60,000 men, including 12,000 slaves, who each carried 1.8 kilograms of gold bars, 80 camels, each carried 23 to 136 kilograms of gold dust, another hundreds of camels loaded with foodstuffs and textiles, scholars, artisans, soldiers, horse riders, and to some sources, even elephants. On his way, Musa gave away gold like it was candy on Halloween. The Mali ruler's camel caravan had crossed the Sahara, and when he arrived in Cairo, Egypt, he caused an absolute sensation that even the Sultan was astounded by the wealth this West African king had brought with him. The king of Mali had given 50,000 gold dinars to the Sultan merely as a first meeting gesture, and in return, Musa was treated like a royalty he was, being given a palace and servants for his three-month stay. During this stay, gold coins flew like confetti. Musa would give away so much gold and his entourage spend so much shopping in the markets of the city that the value of gold dinar in Cairo crashed by 20%, and it would take 12 years for the flooded gold market to recover. The merchants of Egypt were delighted with all these tourists suddenly milling about their markets, and they took full advantage, raising their prices and relieving the shoppers of their gold at any opportunity. After Cairo, Musa's generosity continued as he traveled onwards to Mecca, and he gave gifts to fellow pilgrims and the people of Medina and Mecca. Traveling on to Arabia, he purchased land and houses so that pilgrims from Mali who followed in his footsteps might have a place to stay. News of the Malian Empire's city of wealth eventually reached Europe, 
where traders from Venice, Granada, and Genoa soon added Timbuktu to their maps to trade manufactured goods for gold. In Spain, a map maker was inspired to create Europe's first detailed map of West Africa. It was such tales of gold that would inspire later European explorers to brave disease, warlike tribes, and inhospitable terrain to find the fabled riches of Timbuktu, the golden city of the desert that nobody quite knew where to place on the map, even in the 18th century. Mansa Musa brought back architects from his pilgrimage to Mecca, who would build mosques and universities that made such cities as Timbuktu internationally famous. Mansa Musa was also inspired by the universities he had seen on his pilgrimage, and he brought back to Mali both books and scholars. The king greatly encouraged Islamic learning, especially at Timbuktu, which with its mosques, universities, and many Quranic schools, became not only the holiest city in West Africa, but also an internationally famous center of culture and religious study. Mansa Musa was succeeded first by his son, Mansa Magan, who had also ruled as regent while his father had been on his famous pilgrimage, and then by his brother, Mansa Suleiman, and the Mali Empire would prosper for another century or so before new trade routes were opened up by the Portuguese. The date of Mansa Musa's death is not certain, varying from 1332 to 1337. Some sources claim that Musa intended to abdicate and return to live in Mecca, but died before he could do so. Thank you again for watching this video, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment about our next video topics. Until next time.